Hey everybody, welcome to episode 4 of Warhammer Cursed City, where we're going to be painting the Vicos Bloodborne. A super easy, quick paint job just to get them on the table. We could spend a crazy amount of time on this, but we're not. We're just going to get this as quickly painted as possible so it looks fantastic while playing this board game, which I am doing right now with one of my board game groups, and I thoroughly enjoy it. If you are new to the channel, or you've been watching, or you just stumbled upon this right now, hit that subscribe button. We're doing a bunch of videos. We're going hard in the paint. Ah. Yeah, I know you like that one. But just hit that thumbs up, hit that like, hit that bell button, and let's go. Without further ado, let's go. Obviously, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build our miniatures by following the directions in the Cursed City War Box. If you see anything in this video that you were like, oh man, I need that, it's in the description below. Just go ahead and check it out. Uh, while you're building this, make sure you're scraping off all those nasty, nasty mold lines. And after we assemble our miniatures, we're going to obviously take our three Vicos Bloodborne and we're going to put some earth texture from Vallejo on the base and we're going to let that dry. Once it is completely dry, we're going to spray that with a Mechanica standard gray spray paint or a gray whatever you have if you're using a different type of spray paint. And after that spray paint's dry, we're going to take a dry brush and we're going to hit our ruin pieces with Administratum Gray. Now there's a couple of different pieces on these miniatures, which are fantastic miniatures by the way. Um, there's one that our Vicros Bloodborne is hanging on to and one that is broken down underneath. We're just going to hit those all up with a nice little dry brush. After that dry brush, we're going to take some Griff Charger Gray, which contrast paint from Citadel, and we're going to slap that right onto our ruins. Next, we're going to take some Grey Knight's Steel and hit our metal pieces on our ruins that are hanging down. And for our demonic, nasty root that is sticking up, we're going to take some Plague Bearer Flesh, another contrast paint, and just quickly paint that over. For the bones and for our metal chain that is hanging down the side, we're going to use some skeleton hoard. Now you're going to notice that the gray is going to stick through and that's exactly what we want. It's already basically highlighted. We just got to put the contrast paint on and it's just going to speed up the process. For our candles, the two that are on the base and then the one that is on top of the ruin, we're going to use another contrast paint in Blood Angels Red. This is a very deep, vibrant red. Very nice looking. And we're going to make those candles look very old and demonic by this red. For our base, we're going to use a little bit of Agros Dunes, which is another contrast paint for our base color. Then to highlight up that green just a little bit, we're going to take some Nurgling Green. We're just going to use it a little bit where you can see the light portions already sticking through just to lighten up just a little bit and make them just a little bit more nasty. It just adds to the flavor. For our candle wick, we're going to pretend that they are on fire. So we're going to use I end in yellow. Another contrast paint. If you don't have this, just use a regular yellow. It doesn't really matter. Then to highlight up our skulls just a little bit, we're gonna take some Ushabdi bone and just kind of do the outsides. So you're gonna do the nose, the eyebrows, a little bit on the teeth just to kind of break up that nasty look and just kind of give it some brightness. And 
And finally, we're gonna use some Terminata Stone just to kind of bring up that base dirty look just a little bit. And that's it for the base. Next step, we're gonna go with the uh, fur and the skin. The first thing we're gonna do is the skin, which is probably the most time consuming, and we're gonna use some wrath bone or wraith bone, however you pronounce that. And we are gonna hit up all of our skin areas. Um, this is gonna take you probably the most time. Obviously, you're doing three of them, and it's a little, little, little pain in the butt, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> So hit all those skin areas up. If you get some over in some different areas, it's not a big deal. We can clean that up here in a little bit. This took me two coats of thin paint to fully encompass our skin portion of our miniature. Next, we're gonna make our own wash. And we're gonna take about five to six brushfuls of some Lamia medium. We're gonna put that into a paint well. If you wanna make it thinner, you can. And then we're gonna take some Cadian Flesh Tone and we're gonna mix that together, just one brush full. Once you have that, we're gonna put that on top of our miniature and we're gonna create our own basic wash of this specific tone we're looking for. While that wash is drying, we're gonna take some Gorthor Brown and this is gonna be our first coat on top of our fur. This fur is basically all over the private areas um, and some on the backs of one of the miniatures. So just take your time and cruise around and make sure you get all of that fur area. Once you're satisfied with all of your Gorthor Brown, we're gonna take some Dryad Bark and we're gonna put over about 90% of that Gorthor Brown and we're gonna cover that up. We're gonna re-highlight up here in a second, but this is gonna make it so that Gorthor Brown just kind of peeks out just a little bit over underneath that Dryad Bark. And for this miniature, the female, I'm concentrating on top of the hair and the portions that the light would hit. The underneath, I really didn't touch that much, even though it probably makes sense. I just kind of let it just flow, just be nasty and flow. Once that dryer bark is dry, we're gonna take a dry brush of Gorthor Brown and we're just gonna highlight up those fur areas really quick and the top portions of our hair that is flowing out majestically as it is. Next, we're gonna take our Pallid Witch Flesh and we're gonna do another series of dry brush. And this time we're gonna focus on the fur and the skin at the same time. We're gonna do a two for one BOGO on this miniature. And we are going to just lightly go over the miniature with this Pallid Witch Flesh and it's gonna create our skin tone along with our flesh highlights and our fur highlights. So it's gonna be a nice little just back and forth. Don't overdo it, don't go crazy with it. Just nice and easy. And while you're doing that, go ahead and head over to our Instagram, nerd.nights. You can stay up to date with new videos that we are posting all the time. Next, we're gonna take about three to four brushfuls of contrast medium, and we're gonna mix that together with one brushful or a half a brushful of lupus pink, however deep you want that color to look. This is gonna be our red tone for the eyes. We're gonna then take that, we're gonna put that into the eye sockets of our Vicros Bloodborne, and you can even make nice little patterns or spikes that are coming out from above and below our eye sockets 
just to give it that nice little red look, trying to follow the card art as much as possible. We are also going to use this same color for the mouth. Now it might be a little blotchy inside the mouth, but it will dry out and look just fine. Moving on to step three of our miniatures, we're going to be painting all of the metal bits on our Bicros Bloodborne while that red dries. We're going to be using some Balthazar gold on the front chest pieces of our miniatures. Now obviously since we've already highlighted up our skin and done our dry brush, you want to be very careful while doing this, this step. Don't try and speed rush through this where you're going to get it all over the skin. Just be a little careful. For the shoulder pieces on our miniatures, we're going to take some warp lock bronze, which is a very dark looking bronze color, and we're going to make those our shoulder pieces for our miniature matching the card art as best as we can for this specific miniature we're going to hit the back area for this little fin that is sticking up the shoulder guard which is actually very neat but just be careful because obviously it's touching the back of the head for our strap that is holding this thing up. We're gonna take some Abaddon Black, thinned of course, and if you thin it properly, you are already going to have a nice highlight from the dry brush we just did a couple steps ago. To dole down our hair just a little bit, we're gonna take some Nolan Oil, specifically on this model with flowing hair, these beautiful locks, and we're going to put some Nolan Oil in this thing to make it look a little bit darker. For our rapier or sword, we're going to use some lead belcher on this specific sword for all three of our miniatures. And for this specific miniature, we're going to take some of that lead belcher and put on the spikes that are sticking up. For our hilt, the whole thing, we're just going to do the whole thing in one color. We're going to take some Ganyhana gold and go over that whole hilt area of our sword. And to dole out and make some of our recesses a little darker, we're going to take some Agrax Earth Shade and we're going to use that into our gold pieces. Now our red should be dry by now, so we're going to take some Screamer pink mixed with a little bit of white. We're going to make a very dull pink look, and we're just going to put some little pieces of eyes in there, just little slits that we're going to cover up here in just a second. Once you're happy with that 
pink and white mix, take a little bit of white, and I'm using a size 10 zero brush from Rosemary & Co. And I am making just a little white eye sockets, or white eyeballs, I should say, in that place where we just hit. Just very subtle, nothing too crazy. And I'm also using this same color on the teeth. And to highlight up our metal pieces, we're going to use a edge highlighting basically of Rune Fang Steel and hitting up the top portion of our blades that are hitting the sun. And we're just going to do some edge highlighting going around the edge of our gold pieces. And for the hilt of our sword, we're going to go with a little Liberator Gold just to brighten up just a little bit, hit those raised areas. And finally, coming down to the last steps, we're gonna use some Abaddon Black on the rim of our base just to give it that nice black color. If you wanna use a gray, you can use that as well. And finally, I'm gonna take some tufts and glue them onto our base just to kinda of give it that nice little added dead look. These dead tufts, they're fantastic. And that's it, you did it. These were quick miniatures, just to try and get them on the table, nothing overly complicated, nothing to make them stand out to the point where like they're gonna win tons of competitions. That's not what we're trying to go for, we're just trying to get these miniatures on our table to make them look better while we're playing it. Uh, I just wanna say thank you for watching this channel. If you are not a subscriber, please uh, consider hitting that subscribe button. You know, I put a lot of time into this and I love doing it for the fans that people leaving me comments and that enjoy it. So please do. Until next time, paint on.